All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our spring outdoor uh, on the slide. Got to change up the outdoor. Good start. Um, outdoor bocce presentation. Um, with me tonight is Katie Gleason, who is our sports chair, and Riley Palmer, who you will meet um, throughout the season. Riley is our intern for IUS this year. Um, she is a senior at Salisbury University, um, and she is going to join us through the spring season. So you will see emails from her. Um, you know, again, welcome her if you get a chance to. She'll work with Katie, Jason, and I, and we will get through the season and hopefully provide a, a great opportunity for her. Um, before we get through everything, uh, just some notes for some of our additional opportunities when it comes to what we offer as part of Unified Champion Schools, uh, not just interscholastic unified sports. Um, the MOVE Challenge is our health and fitness initiative that we're working on right now. Um, it's a four week challenge that you can do with students. This one is gonna run in May. Uh, the start date is May 2nd and will run through May 29th. Um, more details I will send out with the follow-up for this webinar, um, but you can get the details. Good fitness challenge, good opportunity for your students to engage in something besides the organized sports that we offer for Interscholastic Unified. Um, additionally, just a reminder for Unified Champion Schools, it is a three-prong approach, which IUS is one of them. Um, the other one is inclusive uh, school leadership um, and then whole school engagement. So leadership, when we're talking about that, we're talking about you know having your team have team captains, right? And when we say team captains, we want a unified partner and an athlete. Um, we want a team to, to work together to lead your team as well. Um, and then for whole school engagement, that's as simple as something as announcing scores from your um, weekly competitions or district tournament or the state championship on the announcements during the PA in the morning. Um, so again, if you have questions on unified champion schools, the other two prongs besides interscholastic unified sports that you can reach out to Melissa, Melissa Kelly for. Um, of course, you can reach out to myself, Katie Gleason, or Riley for Outdoor Bocce for Interscholastic Unified Sports, and we will have our contact for Kayla Shields, who runs our fitness initiatives as well. So, agenda for the night. Um, pretty typical agenda for what you are used to seeing. Um, we're going to talk a little bit season timeline, hit that district rep checklist. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about coaches' trainings. Um, we'll remind you about the forms. Again, the nice part about getting into the spring season is if you have returning athletes from fall or winter season, half the battle's done. Um, forms should be in for a lot of those students. You'll only need to really get forms in for students that are participating for the first time for the spring season. Um, we will remind you about the district layout. Nothing has changed besides for adding District 12, which is Baltimore County. Uh, but again, I'd like to remind folks that we added a new uh, partner and district to the group. Um, and then we'll do some rules reminders and, you know, updates, and uh, we'll kind of close it out with some um, regular season host opportunities and responsibilities for district tournaments and any questions you may have. So the administration stuff, uh, let's hit that right at the top. This is the slide you probably care the most about, the timeline. Um, first day of spring season for MPSSAA starts March 1st. Uh, first eligible play date, which is the first competition date that you could have amongst your schools, is March 21st. Um, additionally, on March 21st, that is when we want all of our initial wave of paperwork in, right? So that initial wave for your students is the application of participation um, and the CDW form, Communicable Disease Waiver. Uh, that's our COVID form. Uh, again, most of you have had your students do that. Um, again, if people have questions about, you know, we did a COVID form for school athletics, Special Olympics needs one as well. Um, again, most uh, groups and or nonprofits or schools or whatever it may be, everybody has a CDW. Unfortunately, you got to do one for each group. Um, team roster declaration form need that team roster and we need that team roster to be as clear as possible with your students that are participating for that season. Um, along with that is getting information into GMS. Those two things are extremely crucial. Um, you've seen some emails from myself 
um, and Katie following up about making sure we have correct team rosters and GMS entries for our census reporting to Special Olympics International, for our reporting for um, grant funding from uh, Maryland Education Department, so on and so forth. Um, so while yes, we use that stuff for competition, we also use that for funding purposes to get you guys supported year after year. So again, March 21st, mark that on your calendar. That's the first big push for paperwork. Um, something else paperwork wise for that deadline that Katie and I have talked about. We know winter season was really chaotic for a lot of people, but we really want to hit deadlines for the spring season. Um, hitting deadlines makes the experience better for everyone who's involved. Um, it allows us to hop on double checking uh, what those rosters and the paperwork looks like. It helps us make sure stuff in GMS is up to date and correct. And with all those things in line, that puts us all in a better place to prepare for and facilitate a really good state tournament opportunity for you and your students. So again, deadlines, we're really gonna push to hit those deadlines and we're gonna get really tight on you know days following. We may give you a buffer of a day or two but we need to hit March 21st for spring. With that said, if there is a crazy circumstance, we still live in COVID pandemic times. If there's a crazy circumstance that comes up, communicate early and communicate often with us. And we're more willing to work with you and you know extend deadlines under certain circumstances. Um, additionally, if a deadline comes up and you have 60% of your roster and 40% of it's all messed up because of COVID stuff, please get us that 60% of that roster and let us know that's what you're getting us. We would rather get 60% on the deadline, get working on the 60% getting into GMS, getting it updated, getting those forms, you know, into our system, than 100% two and a half weeks down the road when you finally get that other 40%. Um, so again, March 21st, big day. That's going to be our deadline for paperwork. Um, so again, we appreciate you guys working hard to hit that deadline. Um, next date on the board here is March 28th, a week later, team assessments can start. Um, that's a good amount of time that your team has been practicing and playing to get uh, your assessments going. And we want those assessments and the data you collect from those assessments turned in with your postseason registration on April 8th another really important deadline to hit because then once we start getting those in and district tournaments start rolling, we're working to put together that state tournament to give you the best competition opportunity we possibly can. District tournaments, uh, April 28th to May 10th. Um, you know, if you got to go a little bit earlier than the 28th, we understand that's okay. Um, but we assume that most of them will fall in that late April, early May window. Um, so let us know when your district tournament is as soon as possible. The sooner we can get that on the calendar, the sooner we can prepare to come out and support you and give you a hand. Um, so again, district tournaments, let us know as soon as possible. And then the thing that you're all gonna be waiting for at the end of the season, state tournament. Uh, state tournament's gonna be on May 24th. It's staying at Washington College in Chestertown. We will let you know when we get a um, inclement weather date it's a tough time of year because of commencements and graduations and all sorts of other things that are going on on campus and the stadium. Um, so we try to be flexible and work with our friends there at Washington College, but we will keep you on the uh, update list for any info on a inclement weather date. Um, additionally, I should mention before I, I move on here too, if you have questions or whatever, feel free to Zoom, raise your hand, type in a question. We have enough people here that we can keep an eye on those things. Um, and we will get to you if you have a question as well. Um, coaches training opportunities. Uh, I sent out an email recently about coaches trainings. I really need everybody to make sure when they host their coaches training that you are sending me your roster and a list of the things that you train them on. Again, giving us information to report back to grant funding, so on and so forth. Um, that'll be really helpful. There are multiple ways that you can host a webinar. First one, you can do a live webinar like we're doing tonight. Um, again, it is times where not everybody can get together. Um, people are sick, people are working from home. We get it, we understand a virtual live webinar is a good way to go. Um, and then the other two options are both in-person meetings 
Um, you know, there are two frames of thought when it comes to the in-person meetings. Um, some people just cover the paperwork, go through the coach resource guide, um, let coaches know about due dates and stuff. A lot of times those are programs that have coaches that have returned after years of experience with the sport of bocce. Um, so the more key pieces and elements that they need to train their coaches on are what to expect for the season, due dates, any updates to the resource guide, so on and so forth. The third option, which I think is the best option, is putting a sport-specific training along with the, um, you know, letting of coaches know dates, resources, so on and so forth. Get on the court after. That's the best way to do it. Again, work out those questions with your coaches that come up with rules and things um, while you're at your coach's training. So you're not having to answer those questions halfway through the season. Um, additionally, if you get your coach's training date to us sooner rather than later, we can be there to support you, help with questions, so on and so forth as well. Um, which the next slide, that's what we're looking to set up. Uh, Katie's put together this chart. Essentially, we wanna get preseason meeting dates and district tournament dates ASAP. Um, so as soon as we are done with this meeting or you receive the follow-up email, um, there will be a request in there. Um, please get that to us ASAP so we can start planning to support you at your meetings and your district tournaments. Um, additionally, that will come out with this slide deck tomorrow when I send the follow-up email will be the district tournament info form. Honestly, this just helps us keep track of the details of your district tournament, of what you need, when, where, um, and how the event is happening so we can come and support. Um, again, we appreciate you taking the time to fill this out because it gives us a detailed record of knowing how we can support you. And when Zach gets crazy and his brain's all over the place halfway through the season and he goes, I don't remember what Barb Costner is doing for track and field and Tanisha is doing for outdoor bocce, what day are their events? Besides for looking it up on my calendar, I have this on there and I can say, oh, Tanisha needs me to bring X, Y, and Z too. I'm on it. So again, it's very helpful to me and I appreciate you guys filling out this form. Um, some additional coaches training options and resources. Special Olympics Pennsylvania, our friends put together uh, a video up there about um, officiating bocce. While it is not a review of rules for coaches, it's a good review of rules and the game from an official standpoint, which is what our officials look for as well. Um, so if you want a, a video rules review um, and a reminder of how the game operates from start to finish, really good video. Um, additionally, SOI has a coach's guide that's roughly a billion pages long. Um, it has everything from working with athletes on how to throw the ball, how to learn about the game, how to break down the game into different parts so you can teach it more efficiently to your athletes. Um, it's got short little videos to show you how to train athletes. It's got everything under the sun when it comes to bocce. Um, it's a great resource. Uh, would highly recommend that you take a look at it at some point um, and you know really kind of get into what the possible opportunities for learning are in that coach's guide. The last thing is going to be, uh, Katie and I are going to get together at some point soon, and we are gonna record our own SOMD rules video. Um, it may be short little snippets of 45 second videos. It may be a whole five minute long video. Not 100% sure which route we're gonna go yet, but we are going to do it. Um, with that said, following uh, with the email tomorrow, I will also request in there, what rules do you guys need clarified? What visual aids slash reminders do you want to see in a video to help train your coaches? What other requests may you have? Um, so please look for that in the email and respond to that. Um, we want to put together a video that's going to help you. And the only way we know how to help you is by you asking for it. So again, we will look to do that very soon. So with that said, I'm gonna turn it over to Katie um, and she is going to take over on district rep checklist and she will also handle some paperwork reminder stuff. Okay. Hey everyone, so it's me, Katie. Um, so first things that we need you to do is, also, is double check with all of your supervisor athletics or athletic directors, make sure you know what coaches are where at schools um, with everybody going through different changes. We wanna make sure you have all the up to 
update information. Also, we need that information as well. Um, make sure that your schedule has already been set or it needs to be set because we literally have what a week and a half until spring sports start. Um, and also please confirm your district date and location. So that like Zach was saying, so we can support you. Um, Zach, I wasn't finished. <laughs> Um, so, and please make sure you reach out to all your new coaches so you can get your briefing done. All right, cool. Thanks, Zach. Um, all right. So recruitment, um, now that we are all back for the most part, I think every school, um, I'm not familiar with all that's going on with Baltimore city, but I'm pretty sure every County has schools that are back in person, not really virtual at this moment. So please reach out to your coaches to have them start recruiting if they have not done so already. Um, please make sure you have an LSS manager that is up to date with GMS. If they are not, please have them Russ, um, reach out to Zach and I, so we can get them caught up. Um, Oh, and if there's a busing need, please make sure that your schools have adequate busing. I know that that is a hot topic amongst most of our counties um, and getting kids to different locations. So please work with your coaches to make sure that they have that all together. Um, if you need a recruitment poster, please reach out to Zach um, so he can get those to you. We've print them off in the past. They really weren't used and they just kind of sat. So if you are in need or if your coaches want them, let us know. We have no problem getting them out to you. Um, yeah, that was that for that slide. Um, so one thing we do want you to think about is what concerns did your students and parents have this school year about participation and how can we ease them with different recruitment tools? Like what can we do to help support you, support the students so that they're more apt to participate? Um, is that yeah, anything just, else on that? Yeah, just to hop in there, Katie, again, I, I had a, a good conversation with my, Michelle Hill at one point. She made a really good point of you know, I think we need to be looking at what a new normal is for, for sports and education and athletics, um, not going potentially back to the old normal. So Katie mentioned with the recruitment posters, they've had some benefits in the past. We, some people haven't used them. Some people haven't liked them. If you have something that you'd like to do for recruitment and idea, send it our way. Um, we're always open to new ideas. And again, we're willing to think outside the box to help with recruitment. Um, and recruitment may just be different now when it comes to your students and parents and what they're looking for to be ensured that, you know, they're going to have a good, safe experience. Okay. Um, so same slide that we've been seeing for most of our sports, because it is critically important. Um, when submitting your paperwork, please, 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 please just double check it. Um, I was going through a county and I'm not gonna throw them out. Um, I went through a county's paperwork the other day to make sure it was all good in GMS and I found so many errors and ineligible writing and different things going on that if it had been a normal season, I would have immediately kicked it back to the district rep and the coaches and said, you please fix this. So when you're coaches are submitting paperwork to you, please have them submit it to you. Don't have them submit it to me. I kick it right back. It's just, I don't know all the schools in the different counties and I'm working with so many different people. It's just easier to work with just the district rep. Um, so please make sure that you're working with your coaches to have everybody listed on their declaration or their rosters, make sure that their paperwork is done. So if a student like Zach said has participated in the spring or in the fall and in the winter sports and has turned in their application to participate, they don't have to submit another one. Um, if they have a CDW already, they don't have to submit another one. They just have to be on the team roster. If they are brand new this season because they're like, yeah, I'm not interested in tennis or I'm not interested in what they were doing this winter, please have them fill out everything. Um, like Zach said, we have that deadline of the tw March 21st. If you want me to look at your paperwork before then, I will accept it anytime. <laughs> um, truthfully, the, the faster you can get into me, the better, because I will be looking it over to make sure that it's good to go. Um, when you are putting in your when the teams are submitting their team roster, they need to also make sure that they have their coaches information 
and also their assistant or volunteers information somewhere so that we know who's coming so that when things get entered into GMS, it's not just some random person. Yeah, well, one more quick note too that I saw from the, um, the winter. Um, some people, um, whether it be coaches, parents or whatever, will send a photo like taken from a phone of a application of participation or CDW or something that's fine. That works. Please pass along the actual photo because we've seen a couple instances of people doing a good job and collecting the photos, printing the photos, and then scanning the photos to us. We can't see nothing when we get those scans of the photos. It comes out all grayed out except for part of the, the uh, scan, and it's next to impossible for us to read. Um, so when it goes to be put into GMS, um, it's next to impossible to dig through that stuff. So again, if, if somebody sends you a photo, that's fine. Kick the photo file straight to us. Don't print it, scan it. Um, otherwise, I think we're good to go. So. Okay. Um, on the application to participate, nothing really new here. It's the same form that we've been using for the last few seasons. Um, each athlete has to, ha each athlete and unified partner has to have one on file with us for the year. So like I said, if they did tennis or something else in the fall or winter and they turn it in already, they're good. They don't have to do it again. The only thing is, is that we've had some confusion about who qualifies as an athlete, especially with newer coaches that grayed out column on the application. So I believe it starts with autism and down syndrome and so on and so forth. That grayed out column is what we designate as the athletes. Anybody else is a partner. Um, that has been, like I said, a lot of confusion. So we did want to clarify that right this moment, that that is the column that designates who's an athlete versus who is not an athlete. So yes, a individual with an IEP who is deaf or hard of hearing, they would actually be considered a partner. Um, yeah. And again, you, you can have an athlete that checks off something in the gray and the white boxes. Um, mm -hmm. Again, like Katie said, the qualifier is they can check off everything in, in the white box and then just check off autism, they're an athlete. They can check off everything in the white box there and not check off anything in the gray. They're a unified partner with an IEP. Right. So when you're submitting their, um, when your coaches are submitting their paperwork to you, please keep an eye on that um, because we want to make sure that teams are equitable and that um, everybody's accounted for. So that's that, nothing else new there. Um, the CDW is the same that we've been talking about all year. It is the Special Olympics um, paperwork when it comes to COVID. Um, we ask that everybody fills it out in order to participate. So, and I don't think there's really anything else new about that, is there Zach? No, nothing new. Um, there are in different districts, vaccination requirements coming up um, that has no impact on how we are currently operating. Um, again, you guys work within your district to operate under district protocols and local health guidelines. Um, but again, the main reason we have people do the CDW is because we, I'm not going to say we don't take those things into consideration, um, but we cannot gather the uh, vaccination data when it comes to HIPAA stuff and sharing information from schools for the most part. Um, so since we can't do that, we don't bother asking about vaccination. If you do in your district, that's great. If that's what they, your district decides that they wanna do, fine. But that has no impact on um, interscholastic unified sports. Okay. Um, the team roster form. So it was officially used to be the affirmation of eligibility. We've changed it to team roster declaration. Um, there is an editable version of it in my drive in the drive somewhere. So I found coaches that submitted it to me electronically with like typing out the names of the students was a lot easier than handwritten. So if you can encourage your coaches to complete things electronically, that would be great. But if they are old school or would like to do things by hand, I'm cool with it. It just has to be legible so that we can read um, what the words are or the letters versus like this one coach, I couldn't tell if it was an A or an E that letters were so similar. Um, so 
this list just needs to make sure it has all the student athletes, the non-student athletes, and coaches and volunteers. So, and this is just kind of telling us where everything goes. So we're going to skip ahead. Um, the one last thing for your GMS person, and this actually is perfect. Oh, or for your, you can go to the last one. For your LSS manager, they need to also double check. Um, this is a, I want to say a fail safe to make before it comes to us. So your LSS manager is not just entering things into GMS. They're also going over the paperwork as well. So you have two sets of eyes looking at the paperwork before it gets to us um, to make sure that everything is good so that if there's something wrong, it gets back to the coach much faster than coming to us, us looking it over because there is going to be a delay. So. Yeah, and, and again, it's it's really important for your LSS managers to get your uh, students registered into training um, for GMS um, in you know the winter season. Again, with the chaos that we had, we had some gaps in entry. Um, so when it came to entering participants in for um, our competition needs that we had in the winter, even with canceling state tournaments. Um, there was a lot of entry that needed to happen along with that instead of just entering qualifying times and scores and all that kind of stuff. So instead of taking, you know, three hours or one day of work doing it, it's a, a multi-day thing. Um, again, you know, we really appreciate LSS managers getting in there, double checking, making sure they get everyone in. And again, if your LSS manager has a question or you have a question with somebody in GMS or getting someone into GMS, feel free to reach out to Katie or myself. We'll get you taken care of. Um, if Katie doesn't have an answer, I hopefully will have an answer. If I don't have an answer, we will go to Mike Sarnowski. And if Mike don't have the answer, it don't exist in GMS. I promise you that. <laughs> um, so um, again, don't be afraid to ask questions. I know GMS can be daunting and confusing at times, uh, but we're here to help. And you know, the more help we can provide and support you with getting stuff into GMS, the more you help and support us getting everything turned around in GMS. All right, so um, all of your volunteers and coaches have to have a class A clearance. And what we asked everybody this year is to make sure that all their coaches and um, volunteers resubmit all of their paperwork just so that we can all start the year off on an even number because it's good for three, it's good for three years. So this way they would think, all right, I did it in 2022. So now I need to do it in 2025. So that it's just kind of going to be easier to remember the numbers. So all coaches and volunteers have to complete the protective behaviors training. They have to do a background check and submit the CDW form. Um, it is confidential and it goes through our SOMD volunteer hub. So it doesn't come to me. It doesn't come to Zach. It goes to Dottie Rush, correct? That is correct. So she looks at it and goes ever and double checks everything. Um, you do not have to have your coaches send me their paperwork when they're done. It goes straight through volunteer hub. That's where they need to upload it. I appreciate getting that information, but truthfully, it doesn't mean anything to me. It just, cause I'm not in charge of that section. So please just make sure that all of your coaches have completed volunteer hub. If you're not sure, we can get that report to you. Um, Zach knows how that is because we did it for somebody else they know he knows how to do that yep yeah we're we're also working on a system um to have volunteer hub talk to gms a little bit better um so again if you have questions just send out an email we can double check we can get things pulled um and additionally a, a note for everybody currently at this time um which is now special olympics favorite saying at this time um cdw forms are a one and done you send that in and it is good forever. Um, that could change. Who knows? We know COVID situations change left and right. But as of right now, turn in a CDW form and you are set on that one, which is nice. Again, protective behaviors, background check every three years. All right. So it's just this now can walks all of us through how to do the protective behaviors so Zach's going to hit forward, 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 and forward. Ta-da, you get a certificate. Once you're done, you put it in your account. 
additionally, this way, this way shows you the option for if you didn't want to go through Volunteer Hub, which is a million times easier for some reason, and you wanted to do all these trainings, and you wanted to download the certificate at the end, and you wanted to send them to Dottie, that's at her email for uh, coaches at somd.org. If you want to go the long way around, this shows you how to do it. We've left it in here. Um, we will again say, go on to Volunteer Hub, create an account, knock those two things out in half the time instead of going the long way. Again, this, this like Katie said, this just shows you the long way um, when you're doing it, putting your, your school code over or under the age of 18. Uh, again, this just walks you through. It'll be in the slides. Um, again, that's kind of everything. Um, again, one note though, uh, if you have a student manager working with your team who's not going to be a student athlete, who's not turning in a application of participation, um, but is doing the volunteer steps. Um, if they're 17 years or younger as a team manager, they need to submit the student minor reference form because they're not 18. We can't run a background check on them. Um, so Again, that's the only odd step when it comes to class A clearance for a uh, school age student versus a 18 plus adult that is part of your school system. Um, additionally, they can go into Volunteer Hub, they can create an account, and when they put in their date of birth, it'll automatically give them the minor form instead of the background check. So again, my recommendation is use Volunteer Hub, it's a lot easier. All right, so the LSS Registration Manager um, Sports Manual, it is complete and up and running, so we should get that out relatively soon before the season even begins. Um, it it so. hasn't changed much since the last time we put it out. Um, so, again, we have the Coach Resource Manual that Katie puts together for our uh, sports and district reps and all you guys. We have a District Host Manual that Katie puts together for the tournaments and putting together the tournaments and recommendation and support we have there. Um, the LSS registration manual is the same thing. Again, the system hasn't really changed whatsoever. Um, I think like you see on the screen, the last time it was published was 2020 for an update and it was a very minor tweak. Um, so if you have an LSS manager that is in need of that, um, we will put that on our drive um, and you can pull it off the drive. Um, and if you also need, uh, a refresher training for LSS managers or yourself as a district rep with using GMS, I'm more than happy to set that up too. Uh, please reach out, email me, and we can set that up through zoom. Um, or I can come and sit down and do it with you. Um, if you'd like that as well. Again, that's more of that stuff. Um, I think we've pretty much hit everything. So, um, the thing is that we just asked that the class A deadline be completed by April 8th. Um, and if you need a verification report, you can email coaches at SOMD and Zach. So if you do email include Zach and you can even include me on it. Um, I don't carry as much weight in that department as Zach does, but this way we can always follow up if something doesn't happen. Yep. Perfect. Um, same thing for non-student athletes. April 8th is that final, final deadline for all of our, uh, you know, paperwork, but we really want things in by March 21st. Um, again, April 8th is primarily for your teams and student athletes that are participating. That's the deadline for your competition roster. Um, resources, again, quick reminder that we have the Google Drive, but we're really working to push you guys to our website page with all of our coaches resource. Um, I will put the link in the email tomorrow when I do a follow up with the slides. Um, on the website, essentially, you can get everything that you need in one or two clicks instead of digging around in a Google Drive folder that, you know, we may forget to give access to someone and then you got to request access and all these other things. So please go to um, the website, uh, the coach resource manual is ready to go. So I will send that tomorrow as well. It will also be on the website. 
Um, the host manual will probably be ready in a week or two, um, and we'll be ready to go with that as well. Um, the link, if you want to just click the link for the coach's website, um, you can click the big bluish green here um, when you get the slides, and that link will kick you there as well. Bunch of different other opportunities and, and quick reference guides and all sorts of stuff on our website, um, but this will take you right to the Outdoor Bocce um, page specifically if you click that here. Comar regulations, everybody's favorite slide. Um, I think we've read this a bazillion times. We read it every uh, preseason webinar. Again, the gist of the Comar regulations, you can't have a student athlete playing in the same sport, which bocce isn't a traditional varsity sport. So I don't think we have an issue with that. Um, and, you know, you can't have somebody crisscross and do unified tennis in the fall and spring varsity tennis in the spring. That's essentially the rundown on Comar, um, at least as it pertains to us. Um, if you'd like to read the, the details, um, feel free to, but we are not going to do that. Um, the district layout, again, we wanted to welcome District 12, which is Baltimore County. Uh, they joined us for the first time for indoor bocce, and they will join us again next year. Um, and again, just to give you a map and an update of what the districts look like. Um, some rules, updates, and reminders. Uh, again, we will have more visual opportunities for rules reminders. You can also go into the coaches resource guide for the spring outdoor bocce season that you'll get in the email tomorrow. And it's got every rule written in there, written down. Um, if you want some extra details on bocce rules, you can go and look up the Special Olympics International bocce rule set. The last update was 2020. Um, and they're still good. They'll do another update in 2024. Um, but if you want to get real deep into the rules, go ahead and do it. Um, again, with rules too, if you have any questions, always reach out to Katie and I. We're more than happy to answer those rules. Um, and again, coaches training, if you want to take that opportunity to do a rules reminder session, we're more than happy to help with that as well. The roster. The roster is one of the main things that we have questions on. Uh, the composition of teams more than anything. Um, minimum of four, maximum of eight players. Um, again, we need two players with a disability and one without a disability. Uh, we kind of want that two to two ratio. You can have three with a disability, one without a disability. You can have, you know, six on a team where the two unified partners stay at each end of the court and the athlete travel back and forth and do two and two like with a team of six. Again, go into the, the coach's guide for the spring and it has all those, you know, compilations of teams and different, you know, compositions that you can do. Um, but again, the main thing, minimum of four, maximum of eight, um, two individuals with a disability and two without a disability. And again, I think we've talked about this a little bit before. If you have a question and more detail on this too, we can talk about it more, but I'm not going to get really deep into it. Um, unified partners that are IEP unified partners can technically count as an athlete with a disability as your, your two to two ratio. So that's something to put into consideration too. Um, doesn't come up a whole lot, but it is possible. Um, you just got to make the note and let us know on your, your team composition for April 8th when you turn that in. Um, again, essentially what this talks about is allocations of teams that we are going to advance to states. Um, and again, we will use their postseason registration form uh, information that you send in to division them at states as well. Um, again, we will have your allocations closer to um, the deadline for the 21st on rosters. You turning in rosters and turning them in on time expedites our ability to figure out how many teams we have training, how many schools are participating, how many allocations we can give out to each district. So again, that 21st deadline, super important for getting the season really rolling at that point. Um, so make sure you get your paperwork in and then we can get allocations back to you so you can start planning divisions for your district tournaments. Um, vetting postseason registrations, not necessarily rule stuff, but please, please, please double check your rosters. Make sure that you have full names on there. Make sure that you have um, 
full scores in there for the assessment. If things aren't updated, we will do our best to do a double check. We always try to. We may miss something at some point too. We really ask you guys to do the double check on the front end and get them to do us as complete as possible. We will do our best if we catch something to kick it back to you. But if we don't catch something in time and we are putting together divisions and finalizing stuff for state tournament and then we catch it, we're just going to say you're out of luck because we really need you to vet that on the front end. Um, again, we're willing to work with you. We just need you guys to make sure you're putting in the, the work on the front end. Um, and we're more than happy to, to work with you guys. Um, again, substitutes are only applicable for teams of at least eight players. Um, so again, for the most part, don't see a lot of substitute items. Um, but occasionally you will on a team roster that is max to capacity. So when you're making your teams, please, please, please remember to do your high school name and then a number, um, colors, animal names, uh, whatever else you want to put in there for signifying different teams does not work with us because GMS does not care about words and or your favorite color or shapes or whatever the heck you may want to use. GMS loves numbers and can fathom and understand numbers. Right. So this goes into, so if, cause we had this question pop up, what if a team has more than eight and enough for two teams, go ahead and create two teams. So yeah. it would be best high school one, best high school two. Um, so don't have your coaches think, Oh, I can only have eight on a team. No, they can have two teams or more depending upon what their numbers are. Yeah. And having more teams does not hurt you necessarily for going to state tournament, more teams you have, the more allocations you will get. That's what it simply comes down to. Um, at the same time, if you have a bazillion teams of four, when you should probably be making some teams of six and eight, that will eventually come back to hurt you with allocation. So there, there is a, uh, a double-edged sword there when it comes to playing the numbers games with teams. Um, but you guys probably know that better than I do at this point. Um, when it comes to uniforms, again, you guys should know the deal with the uniform specs, where the logos go, either on the left chest or the sleeve or on the back. Um, I will say that we, um, we got uh, they're probably one inch by three inch IUS um, pill shaped that typical pill shaped patches. I don't have a ton of them in the office. I probably have maybe 100 or 200 of them. But our company that does our merchandise and our, our clothing and stuff, they've done the order and they can do another order for us. So if you have a team that joins you and they have school shirts already that are have the school logo and all that kind of stuff on it, but it needs a unified sports logo, we can order you patches and we'll figure that out. But with that said, please ask me sooner rather than later. You need to have legal uniforms to participate in the state tournament. If you ask me a week and a half before the state tournament for patches to make your uniforms legal, I'm not going to be able to make that happen. I don't know if they can sew and print patches that quickly. So again, there's some alternative options for uniforms that we can do when it comes to patches now. Um, so please reach out if you need that. Uh, but again, you need a legal uniform to participate at states. Uh, again, uniforms or equipment, steps for uniforms and equipment. Step one, talk to your athletics director or your supervisor slash coordinator of athletics, whoever that may be in your district. Two, if that's not an option, there's a financial issue, there's some sort of issue that comes up, reach out to me. Uh, you guys should all have my phone number, text me, call me, email me, whatever it may be. Um, you know, there's, there's a chance that we can assist and help support you to get what you need when it comes to uniforms and equipment. Can't absolutely guarantee, obviously we have a budget as well, um, but we are more than willing to help you to take care of your athletes in dire circumstances for sure. Um, some look ahead to admin and preparedness. This is more about the process that Katie likes to put in place to you know, really check in with you guys and touch base to see how things are going with you. Um, Katie will conduct some sort of weekly check-in. Um, you know, it's been a phone call in the past. We've realized with everyone going virtual and being pushed into Zoom and phone calls for everything they do, 
it gets unappealing after years of doing that. Yes, we are talking years of doing that at this point. Um, so Katie has been flexible. She's been really, really good with everybody the past couple seasons. Text, phone call, FaceTime, smoke signals, whatever you guys <laughs> work out that works for you guys, perfectly fine. But I'm going to ask you guys to please, please, please communicate with Katie. Um, again, it can be a two text message thing. Hey, how's it going this week, Tanisha? How are things uh, in Baltimore City? What can we do to help you? I'm good, Katie. Everything's going great. That is a check-in as far as I'm concerned, and I'm pretty sure as far as Katie's concerned, that is a successful check-in as well. Um, anything that you want to add, Katie, this is this is your deal. Um, I just want to support right. No, I'm personally, I think text messages are much faster than me sitting down and um, sending an email. Um, if district reps want me to email or call, let me know, but I'm pretty much going to just do the two, like really quick text message. Um, I know we all have families, we all have other responsibilities and having like a designated day or time to me, is just not feasible with some of our schedules these days. So that's why I'm like, text messages just seem to work the best. So it'll be a 315 area code number. It's not a spammer. I promise it's me. Or at uh, least that phone number will be mine. <laughs> speak. So speaking of funky phone numbers, I forgot Katie's got a little bit of a funky phone number. Um, I had this conversation with Jen Hill recently because she's a New York person. Um, if you see a 973 New Jersey number, more than likely that is Zach calling you. Um, it could be spam. You could consider me spam. That's totally fine. I respect that. Um, but more than likely a 973 New Jersey number is me calling and or texting. Um, so don't be afraid, um, unless you're for some reason afraid of me and then we'll have to work that out, I guess. Um, other than that, that's it. We're at the end of the finish line here. Um, I know you guys come on and this is a little bit of a, a long experience, but again, we want to get you the information to set you guys up for a strong season. Um, good news is it looks like we're coming in a few minutes short of seven 30 still. With that said, I want to open the floor to questions. If anyone has any questions, um, any topics that have come up, any concerns for uh, deadlines. I know we've talked about slotting around deadlines based on situations for multiple districts and stuff. Um, now's the time to do it. Questions, comments, concerns. Um, I'll, do you mind if I hang back once everyone's finished? Yeah, I do have um, some questions and dates and stuff like that. Yeah, we can touch you, um, you and Katie. Cool. All right. Well, Katie, do you have any final things that you want to add into here? No, I just wish everyone a really good season and just double check the paperwork and we'll definitely be in touch. Fantastic. All right, Riley, you want to add anything in? No, it's, I think it's all good. <laughs> all right, Riley, Riley loves it. She's happy. Um, she's ready to get out of here too after her first webinar. Um, no, I'll, I'll echo what Katie said. Uh, thank you guys for, for everything you've done through the first two seasons. I'm really excited for the spring season. I'm, I'm really excited to get back outside, quite honestly. Um, we've had a few nice weather days and I'm, I'm itching to get back outside. I'm itching to see some bocce outside, itching to see some track and field, but Again, if you guys have issues that pop up, communicate with us, communicate often, communicate early. Uh, we're here to support you. We wanna do everything we can to support you and your students and have a great season. And I'm just really looking forward to spring season at this point, guys. So again, uh, we thank you for everything that you're, you're doing, what you're gonna do. Uh, we're looking to close out the year strong. And if you need anything, please reach out. Other than that, thanks for joining us tonight.